In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we have finished the official portion of the book, and now let us read some supplementary tales that were also attributed to this book as well, to the spiritual meadow. O heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who art everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us of all impurity and save our souls, O good one. Chapter 220 At the beginning of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, the most faithful Caesar, we came to the oasis which lies to the west of the innermost Thebaid in the wilderness. Rumor has it that Nestorius was exiled to the eastern regions for having blasphemed against the All-Holy Mary, the true Mother of God, and against the eternal Word of God who was incarnate without sin and born of her. A letter of recall was sent to him by the emperor at the behest of persons of consequence who shared his opinion. Later in the evening, Nestorius went to the privy before going to bed, and while he was there, he is said to have exclaimed within the hearing of those who were standing outside, I showed you, Mary, you bore a man and no God. Having heard him speak like that, they withdrew, for they were under orders to let no one into the apartment until he invited them to do so from within. Immediately, whilst the blasphemous words were still on his lips, an angel of wrath sent by God smote him as he was sitting in the privy, and his bowels gushed out. Thus the wretch suffered just retribution for his evil counsel and blasphemy. At dawn, the bearer of the imperial letters arrived in haste, saying he had to meet a deal time, a deadline. Sorry, he had to meet a deadline and could not wait, since Nestorius did not call in, uh, call in accordance with the instructions they had received, and the officer was standing there waiting. They forced their way into the apartment, coming to the chamber in which Nestorius was accustomed to sleep. They knocked, but received no reply. As the doors were fastened from within, they broke them from their hinges and so gained entrance. When they did not find him there, they sought him in the privy and found him sitting there dead. When those who served him were asked whether some indisposition had befallen him to bring him to this pass, they replied, saying, Late in the evening he dismissed us with joy and happiness. He fastened the doors as you found them, went to the privy, and sat down. Just as we were about to go, each one of us to his place of rest, we heard him talking to himself and saying, I showed you, Mary, you bore a man and no God. Then all those who heard this perceived that he had undergone that lamentable death so that the saying of the great prophet Jeremiah might thereby be fulfilled, the one that says, Woe to that man, they will not weep for him, O Lord, neither let them say, O brother, O sir, he will be buried in a grave for a donkey, he will be dragged along and cast out beyond the gates. Such was the end of the impious Nestorius, when he was about to succeed to eternal outer darkness, and had already beheld the forecourt thereof. The wretch brought upon himself a just retribution for his evil counsel and blasphemy. Now, of course, those who are aware with who Nestorius is or was realize that he was in some way or shape a disciple of Arius, the arch heretic, you might say, the sort of the first heretic who caused a tremendous rift within the church. And Nestorius continued this rift without perhaps attacking the Son of God himself, although in these words before death, there's definitely a blasphemy against the Son of God. But he also carried his attack by attacking the Mother of God and refused to call her Theotokos, the one who gave birth to God. But instead, he called her Christotokos, the one who gave birth to Christ, to the Anointed One. Now, from the strict Orthodox perspective, we wouldn't be offended necessarily to say that the Mother of God is definitely Christotokos, that she gave birth to Christ. However, for us, first and foremost, she is the Theotokos, the one who gave birth to God, God who is Christ incarnate in the flesh. 
This story is of tremendous benefit to all of us, personally, I think. If anything, then, to remind us that God's patience, which is profound and indeed sometimes appears to be boundless for repentant sinners, for the unrepentant sinners has its limits. Now, in no way to limit God, but to say that in his wisdom and knowledge of everything, he sees whether it is possible for a person to repent and to mitigate perhaps the evils that the person has done. He also sees whether the person will not go into repent and will continue to increase the evils that the person has done. And I think in the latter case, God sometimes most notably cuts short the lives of such people. On the one hand, to give us perhaps a notice that we should not be carried away by evil in utter forgetfulness and should really try to remember that we have to give an account for our lives and that we have to stand before God at judgment. And of course, that judgment can come upon us sometimes very unexpectedly and swiftly, just as it did in the story in this particular case. It's quite obvious he had no intention of dying at the time. In fact, he was most likely very happy because he managed to get himself called back to the emperor's court, hoping perhaps for some restoration of position. And yet God cut his life short. Now, on the part of God, who is true love, we would have to say that it is actually an expression of mercy stopping someone before he could do even more evil, because then that person's punishment is less. If God were to allow him to live on and to subvert even more people, his punishment would even be greater. And with that in mind, of course, let us do our best, always, 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 to remember what the most important thing for any Orthodox Christian is, and that is, we must stay within the bounds of the Church. And that is, if we are going to be true members of the Church of Christ, we have to be not just outwardly members of the Orthodox Church, but inwardly. In all of our beliefs and convictions, we must accept the teaching of the Church. And when I say the teaching of the Church, I mean the church the church essentially from adam to this day and most importantly of course from christ until now the teaching of the church is manifest in the writings of the holy fathers in the decrees of the ecumenical councils and those councils which were not deemed to be ecumenical but that are accepted by the entirety of the orthodox church we cannot be truly orthodox christians if we do not hold to the same beliefs that our mother, the Orthodox Church, does. Nestorius clearly put himself outside the church by propagating his heresy, his false belief that the Virgin Mary, the ever-Virgin Mary, gave birth not to God but to man. That's something that would be utterly inadmissible and unacceptable for any Orthodox Christians to consider. And there are other things, perhaps, that we could think of right now. And if you want to, in the commentaries, you, of course, you can uh, write or leave a comment and think of what other beliefs, especially modern-day beliefs, current beliefs, that do not uh, sort of present themselves as compatible to the teachings of the Church that you could think of. Perhaps we should be comfortable, I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry, definitely comfortable to express our opinions for sure. Do be careful, though, sometimes, you know, we don't want anybody to be blocked on YouTube uh, 
for expressing some opinions maybe too openly. Uh, unfortunately, we live in the day and age where the teachings of the church are most definitely considered unacceptable by people of this world. I, I'm pretty sure you probably agree and uh, hopefully agree and most certainly probably understand what I'm referring to. At any rate, um, the Lord says we should be innocent as doves and wise as serpents. So hopefully we can share our opinions without exposing ourselves uh, to the world, so to speak. And yet I think this example is most important. And while this is an example of a heresy that attacked the very nature of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, attacked the very uh, sort of core belief regarding his mother, there are other things uh, in our day and age that I think attack the very human nature, the nature of uh, man as God created him. And of course, because of that, definitely anybody who holds to those beliefs, I think will find himself outside of the church one way or another. From which, of course, may God protect us and keep us in the fold of his holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church, in which may God grant all of us salvation. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, through the prayers of thy most be mother of our holy and God-bearing fathers, of our holy and God-bearing father John Moscas, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for joining. Thank you for your support. Please keep me a sinner in your